What's up guys, Andy Drifter here. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you're all doing well. This past weekend was pretty active for me. On Friday, I got to spend the afternoon in Cooperstown, New York, aka Baseball Heaven. Hall of Fame alumni were doing autograph signings all throughout the weekend. I got the chance to meet Lou Whitaker as well as John Smoltz and add their autographs to my collection. This year's Hall of Fame inductees were headlined by David Ortiz, Tony Oliva, and Jim Cott, so congratulations to them. As far as next year, it may be reminiscent of 2013 with nobody getting in. The best chance as far as this year's holdovers are Scott Rowland. He got 63% of the votes, and next year's newcomers are headlined by Carlos Beltran. I don't see him getting in at all. But if he does get in, it won't be until later on, maybe the 7th, 8th, ninth year. He is definitely not a first ballot Hall of Famer. Feel free to comment below if you disagree with me on that. I think he is in the Hall of Very Good. On Saturday afternoon, I was in Baltimore, Maryland. My intention was to get Talia Tunga by Loa's autograph. He was doing a signing. For those of you that don't know, he is the younger brother of Miami Dolphins quarterback Tua Tunga by Loa. And according to the scouts... He is more skilled than his brother with better arm strength. He is currently the quarterback for the University of Maryland, but unbeknownst to me, that signing was canceled. So, small bummer there, but no skid off my teeth because I already purchased a ticket to the Yankees-Orioles game, and what a game it was. The Orioles ultimately won 6-3. Aaron Judge, though, he had himself quite a night. He went 4-5, for five, two doubles, two singles, two RBIs, two runs scored. He is pretty much solidifying his case for AL MVP this year, and I don't see him not getting it, barring some unforeseen catastrophic collapse in production or if he gets injured. That award is his, and he is in line for a big contract extension, and hopefully he will stay with the Yankees. So I'm going to share with you some of the autographs that I got over the weekend, as well as some things that are outside the scope of baseball, football, cards, and autographs. I'm going to roll them out for you. Tell me what you think. You are looking at two signed 8x10s. On your left is Hall of Fame inductee Alan Trammell, and on your right is my recent acquisition, Lou Whitaker, who I got the chance to meet this past weekend. Trammell was inducted into Cooperstown in 2018. Whitaker is still waiting. He has exhausted his years on the ballot, so his only way to get in will be through the ERA committee, and many people, including myself, feel like he will get in sooner than later. Trammell and Sweet Lou made up one of the best shortstop second base combinations of all time. Lou Whitaker had a well-established career, five-time All-Star, three-time Gold Glover, 244 career home runs. He, along with Alan Trammell, Jack Morris and company, they did win a World Series together, and both of them played their entire careers in Detroit. So there it is, two signed 8x10s, and they are both certified by JSA. This here is a Hall of Fame Signature Series card signed by 2015 inductee John Smoltz. He is the only pitcher in Major League history to have 200 career wins as well as 150 career saves. He, along with Greg Maddox, Tom Glavin, and Steve Avery, made one of the fiercest pitching rotations in the history of baseball. After retirement... He went on to become a MLB analyst for Fox Sports as well as a play-by-play -play announcer. So there it is. He's got a great looking signature. I really do like these Hall of Fame cards. And I'll flip it over on the other side. JSA was there and they authenticated it. I have been slowly adding comic books to my collection. Mind you, at this point, I am just a novice collector. But every now and again, I will see something that catches my eye. And if the price is right, I will snatch it up. What you are looking at here is an April 2022 edition of Justice League. The artist who illustrated this cover is Tony Harris. And this is a variant cover. From my understanding, this was a retail exclusive. And only one out of every 50 orders would receive this variant cover. So that makes it somewhat rare in my opinion. I would peg the value of this comic somewhere in the $40 to $50 range. 
as you can see, the corners are super clean. It is boarded up and covered up. So, I thought I would share this with you. I got it about a week ago. I also picked up these two comics here. I've always been a fan of the Batman movies. I guess the element of darkness is something that I am attracted to. On your left is an April issue of Batman Shadow War Part 2. The artwork is done by Joshua Williamson. And on the right is a July issue of The Joker. And that artwork is done by Giuseppe Camancoli. Again, it was the artwork on the cover of both these comics that really caught my eye. And that is the reason why I snatched them up. This here is also a variant cover comic book. A retailer incentive variant to be exact. You are looking at an April 2016 issue of Miss Marvel. The cover art is done by renowned artist Michael Cho. And it is worth in the neighborhood of $100. Perhaps sometime in the near future I will send this off to CGC. Have them take a look at it and assign a grade. Slowly but surely I have been adding some Lego sets to my collection. This here is a Star Wars Series 8 Micro Fighter set. It's been proven time and again that Lego sets, specifically Star Wars, will gain in value over time. You simply buy them and hang on to them. And in several years you can double your money, triple your money, even quadruple your money in some cases. Of course, Lego sets, unlike baseball cards, they consume a lot more space. So that is an issue to take into consideration. I'll hang on to it for a few years and add some more Lego sets, most likely Star Wars, because I know how popular they are, and see where it goes from there. And the last thing that I have for you is a 2017 Panini XR autograph card of O.J. Howard. He spent the first five years in the NFL with the Buccaneers. He put up some decent stats his first three years. He tore his Achilles in 2020. Last year, his time was sort of overshadowed by Gronk, who is Brady's all-time favorite target. So now he signed with Buffalo. He got a fresh start there. Early reports from minicamp are saying that he's had some struggles as far as breaking out. You may or may not know that uh, Achilles tears sometimes have lingering effects. So hopefully he can snap out of it and him and Dawson Knox can make one hell of a one-two punch. Listen, I want to thank you for taking the time out to watch my video. I hope you enjoy the rest of your weekend. Take care, be safe. Tune in tomorrow. I will upload some more videos for you. And until then, take care and I will see you again soon.